bonjour mes amis i've just returned from a wonderful weekend in paris so in today's video i thought it would be really lovely to share some of the highlights with you and some of the little treasures that i found on my travels <laughs> When I heard that there was a Schiaparelli retrospective at the Musée des Arts Décoratifs in Paris, I just knew that whatever else was going on, I had to get there. If you spend time with me here on my channel, you'll know that Schiaparelli is one of my favourite designers, if not my favourite designer of all time. I am rather passionate about vintage Schiaparelli. So I tootled off to Paris with one of my besties, Estelle, to enjoy all the wonderfulness that that beautiful city has to offer. We stayed in this really lovely hotel called Eugène de Ville, which Estelle actually chose, and it was rather apt because the whole decor matched with my favourite colour palette, and I especially loved these blush pink, mid-century sort of chairs. One of my favourite things to do, sitting in a bistro, or outside of a bistro just watching the Parisian world go by and on our first evening we had a wonderful meal something that was particularly charming and you really would not see in England health and safety and all were the zebra finches that were in a cage near us I'm not really big on caged birds because I like to think of them flying free but they were very sweet and they made a lovely chirruping sound serenading me and my friend whilst we ate our French onion soup on the Saturday morning, we ventured down towards the Seine and the museum. The exhibition did not disappoint. The wonderful thing was seeing things that I've only ever read about or seen pictures of. There were a few things that I'd never seen before. There were quite a few highlights for me, including seeing the skeleton dress, which was the thing that started my love of couture and fashion so many years ago. That was a very special moment and to see the dress not behind glass, to be able to get all the way around the dress and to see how it fastened and really see the construction. For me as somebody who spent all of my career pattern cutting and constructing samples and making things was an absolute joy. In the shop, which was manned by one of the rudest people <laughs> that I have ever met, I just got myself a postcard of my favourite, one of my favourite dresses and this was in the exhibition and it was really lovely to see it, although you couldn't really see the back of it but it was incredible to see how these sleeves were constructed. I am embarking on a very long and in-depth project replicating pieces of vintage Schiaparelli. This is something that I'm documenting over on my Patreon so if that's something that is interesting to you, learning to sew, learning to pattern cut and then also learning quite a lot about high fashion and couture fashion history then my Patreon is the place to be. Head over to Tara School of Dressmaking. I will link that and as much of the other things as I can mention will all be linked below so that you can go and have a little look for yourselves. I always love to buy a pencil um, this one is um, just the shocking pink, Schiaparelli shocking pink, which is one of my favourite colours. And we always need a good pencil if we are doodlers. So I like to always buy myself a souvenir pencil from exhibitions that I visit. The gift shop at the museum, whilst being run by incredibly rude people, was fantastic. There were loads of incredible things there. Museum gift shops always seem to be full of incredible ideas and gift ideas and so on. But I picked up this magazine, Fair Magazine. It is a, an English, um, it's written in English. But I really like this um, woman on the front, um, Jamie Beck, a photographer. I really like her Instagram. And this magazine is sort of documenting the lives of creative people, what their homes are like, what their processes are like all around the world, all sorts of diverse, interesting people. And I've heard of the magazine, but I've actually never seen it before, available to buy. So I grabbed myself a little copy. It was 16.50 euros, so I suppose about 
14 pounds something like that which is not a, something i'd usually spend on a magazine but inside are very very beautiful um beautiful pages inspiring interiors and just sometimes as a creative person it's really nice to see how other creative people organize their lives and their thought processes and how they make creativity work for them which is something i spend a lot of time thinking about after quite a few hours spent in the schiaparelli exhibition we wandered around without a particular aim in mind and found some amazing shops my friend Estelle had told me about these kilo vintage shops where you really rummage around. You weigh the items and you pay by weight. So we managed to find a whole load of those all in a row. I found this really amazing jacket. Most things were sort of not really my cup of tea. And what I absolutely love about this is that it was so Schiaparelli. It's got all these lovely roses on it. It's sort of a brocade textured, but feels a bit quilted. And it has these sort of statement buttons, something that was very much a Schiaparelli thing. It fits really well. There's a bit of an issue in that there is a, there's a buttonhole missing here, but you can wear this sort of pinned back, buttoned back here. And what I was going to do was take these buttons off because they're slightly unfortunately placed and just sort of create like a cuff link sort of um, fastening lower down. So that was my sort of one clothing purchase from the weekend from the trip. And that was 20 euros a kilogram. I think I paid something like 650 euros for it. So a bit of a bargain. We rounded off our wonderful day sitting in a cafe opposite the Folie Bergère drinking a lovely bottle of white wine not each we shared it talking about all things that we had seen that day and just feeling absolutely like the most heavenly day had happened on the Sunday morning we headed to the amazing flea market, very famous flea market. I find it really hard to pronounce, but Clignancourt, the Marché des Puces, in the northern area of Paris, you have to jump on the metro and made our way on a rather rainy Sunday morning to the market. It's somewhere that I've always wanted to go and I have actually never been. One of those things to sort of tick off my list of dream things to do. I was browsing in a really interesting little ephemera shop one selling stamps and prints and all sorts and there was a pile of magazines and as i was going through these vintage magazines from sort of the the, the sort of 19 teens and onwards i couldn't believe my eyes when i saw the cover of this particular magazine because it was Schiaparelli and actually one of the pieces, the sort of tree bark fabric cloak that was very famously illustrated for I think Harper's Bazaar, it was in the exhibition and there it was on the front of this magazine from 1935 and then when I looked inside the magazine there was just so many beautiful things. It really seemed like this whole weekend that we spent in Paris was just full of these magical moments that were all just beautiful and made it so perfect. This thread of Schiaparelli, this sort of almost pilgrimage for me to go and visit the exhibition and then all of these little things that happened sort of as we went through our weekend that were sort of connected to Schiaparelli and I of course bought this magazine, it was only 12 euros. It really is an incredibly beautiful and historical document and if you love vintage fashion as much as I do, and I know you do, especially fashions from the 30s and 40s, then this one is, is a real treasure. The flea market is a real experience and a lot of the vendors have signs saying no films, no cameras and so on. I'm not really entirely sure why you wouldn't be allowed to photograph their stock. There were two, two stores, if you can call them that, there were more than stalls next to each other and one was just full of vintage lampshades and light fixtures and if you've seen my studio 
decorating video you'll know that I have a penchant for 1930s glassware and I actually have a very similar lampshade in my studio that looks like a little UFO and they're quite modern vendors at the flea market because it was very clear they were the sort of the old guard the people have been doing it forever and everything was sort of like a a real toot sort of rummage thing even though the antiques there were very expensive and even if they weren't antiques they were very expensive and then these sort of people who are moving in and doing something a little bit more curated and modern and all with instagram accounts so these these particular people had some amazing things and their Instagram is below. The rains ceased and the blue skies sort of came out again and we headed to the Sacré-Cœur area of Paris and the Montmartre. I really wanted to go to the Rose Bakery. There is one in London and I've got the cookbook and it was one of those things that I really wanted to go and see but they'd stopped service by the time we got there. So we just took a few little pictures of the outside because it's such a pretty building and then found somewhere to eat and we happened upon a converted windmill. I think it's quite a famous sort of place for tourists to go. It was very touristy and it was called Le Moulin de la Galette and served traditional French food. I ordered moule mariniere, but I have to say it was not as lovely as I hoped it would be. And actually that was the only one sort of slightly disappointing experience. My friend's meal though, she chose the duck, was very, very lovely. So maybe it was just uh, one of those things. I not sure that I would recommend that you go. The experience of sitting in a restaurant that is very historic and has this windmill was really lovely but I wasn't that impressed with the service and I wasn't that impressed with the quality of the food. One of the things that we'd wanted to do was go to the Moulin Rouge possibly or to some kind of burlesque show. The Moulin Rouge was sold out so we weren't able to go and see a show and the other burlesque venues didn't have burlesque shows on at the time that we were visiting but we'll just have to go back and book tickets and see something va va voom when we next visit. We headed to the Gallery Lafayette to see the interior and it really was an incredibly beautiful building. We headed up to the top so that we could see the Parisian skyline and to look at the Eiffel Tower in a distance. One of the things that I've never really understood is if you go up the Eiffel Tower you can't see the Eiffel Tower but it's free to visit the terrace on the rooftop of the Gallery Lafayette and you can see quite a lot of the very beautiful opera building and also the Eiffel Tower in the distance. The sun was setting as we were there and I really am not one for heights so I did find it quite difficult to be up there but it was really lovely seeing the lights come on on the Eiffel Tower and the searchlights start to sparkle across the sky. We spent most of our days walking to and from and around the city to see various things that we wanted to see and just happen upon lovely places and things. I think is one of the best ways to enjoy a city, to have a general plan and a, a destination, but on your way there or on your way from, step into sort of galleries and things that are happening and you never know what you're going to stumble across. We saw these amazing musicians on the steps of the opera house and that was a really enjoyable thing. It really was a fun, lovely atmosphere there. <laughs> Christmas lights all over the place, twinkling, laughter, happy faces. Sadly Monday was our day to come home but before that we did head to Ultramod. It really was the most wonderful experience. The staff were so incredibly friendly and I'd sort of got the wrong idea of it in that I kind of thought that it was more of a sort of fabric and wool shop, general kind of sewing supplies but it's 
sort of like Vivi Rouleau here, or I suppose Vivi Rouleau has kind of been inspired by Ultramod, had the most beautiful ribbons and passementary bits and pieces, millinery things and buttons and so on. It was just mouth-wateringly delicious. I bought my daughter some gifts, which I'm not going to show you because she does sometimes watch this and I may not have been able to give them to her. I wouldn't want to ruin the surprise. Did buy a couple of things for myself. So this isn't something that I bought in Paris, but I found this really beautiful tweed skirt in a charity shop and it's got some holes in it and it's a bit teeny tiny for me, but it's beautiful sort of tweedy pinks and I'm going to be sewing a Marlena beret with it and I thought when I saw these beautiful grow grain ribbons in ultra mod they're coming out quite bright on camera but they are a little bit duskier and what I'm going to do is I've got a sort of a thinner one and I'm going to use that around the the band and then the thicker one, instead of doing a little doodly stalk thing, I'm going to create some kind of bow situation and kind of pop that on the top of the beret. So that will be a lovely memento of my visit to this incredible shop. And I also bought for no particular reason but you know if you spend any time with me here in my cottage by the sea my ridiculous love of tassels and i found these really lovely they're in these little bags so you're not really going to be able to get the full marvelousness of them but i shall open this one up to show you these little tassels they had tassels in every color size even sort of bright luminous ones but I bought just two of these little tassels no idea what to do with them I think I'm actually just gonna thread them up and and have them as earrings make some sort of jewelry with them because I just think that would be lovely and actually they are sort of the sort of a schiaparelli pink so again another lovely um reminder of a beautiful day i can't remember how much they were i mean it was a little bit of a spenny shop and then i found this again shocking pink wired um ribbon and they had this really fabulous display so by the ribbons and things they would have displays of things that you could do with them and techniques things that you could do and they had all these really lovely roses so Estelle bought some colours to make some roses and I bought this um, colour to do some roses as well and maybe make like a little corsage or something with that. So that was an incredible experience. Really worth popping yourself into Ultramod if you love ribbons and all sorts of bits and pieces in which to embellish and bedazzle and beautify clothing that you already own. With a very heavy heart and incredibly aching feet, we made our way back to the Garden Noir and the Eurostar to come home. I haven't been away for a very long time and I haven't been to Paris in about 20 years, so it was a really wonderful experience. I cannot wait to go back to have many more wonderful adventures. I really hope you've enjoyed hearing about my travels and my treasures that I found whilst I was in Paris. I strongly urge you to go to see the Schiaparelli exhibition. It is literally the best thing that I have ever seen. I may be slightly biased. I'll link everything that I possibly can below. If you are looking for somewhere to stay in Paris, the hotel that I stayed in was really one of the loveliest that I have stayed in. Lovely staff, beautiful interiors, really comfortable beds and very, very reasonably priced. An excellent location you could get sort of anywhere within about 15 to 20 minutes and that meant that we didn't really have to metro it or uber it everywhere we were able to walk and enjoy the beauty of the city i hope that wherever you are in the world you are keeping very very safe and well and i'll see you really soon for some sewing adventures next time see you soon my lovelies au revoir